The measure of a society is found in how they treat their weakest and most helpless citizens. A strong nation, like a strong person, can afford to be gentle, firm, thoughtful, and restrained. It can afford to extend a helping hand to others. It's a weak nation, like a weak person, that must behave with bluster and boasting and rashness and other signs of insecurity. We cannot be both the world's leading champion of peace and the world's leading supplier of the weapons of war. I have one life and one chance to make it count for something. My faith demands that I do whatever I can, wherever I am, whenever I can, for as long as I can with whatever I have to try to make a difference. All I want is the same thing you want. To have a nation with a government that is as good and honest and decent and competent and compassionate and as filled with love as are the American people. What are the things that you can't see that are important? I would say justice, truth, humility, service, compassion, love. Dot they're the guiding lights of a life. The test of a government is not how popular it is with the powerful and privileged few, but how honestly and fairly it deals with the many who must depend on it. The bond of our common humanity is stronger than the divisiveness of our fears and prejudices. Matty J.T. Stepanek Just Peace, A Message of Hope, page 159, Andrews McNeil Publishing We Become Not a Melting Pot, But a Beautiful Mosaic. Different people, different beliefs, different yearnings, different hopes, different dreams. I am no big shot. I am not anybody's boss. I want to be everybody's servant. God wisely designed the human body so that we can neither pat our own backs nor kick ourselves too easily. Failure is a reality, we all fail at times, and it's painful when we do. But it's better to fail while striving for something wonderful, challenging, adventurous, and uncertain than to say, I don't want to try it because I may not succeed completely. America did not invent human rights. In a very real sense human rights invented America. When people are intimidated about having their own opinions, oppression is at hand. You always get back much more than you give. Quote, I'd like to be remembered as someone who was a champion of peace. I'd like to be remembered as someone who was a champion of peace and human rights. Faith implies a continuing search, not necessarily the final answer. To be true to ourselves, we must be true to others. Wherever life takes us, there are always moments of wonder. I've never won an argument with my wife, and the only time I thought I had I found out the argument wasn't over yet. Earlier in my life I thought the things that mattered were the things that you could see, like your car, your house, your wealth, your property, your office. But as I've grown older I've become convinced that the things that matter most are the things that you can't see, the love you share with others, your inner purpose, your comfort with who you are. God always answers prayers. Sometimes it's yes. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes it's you gotta be kidding. I can get up at 8 a.m. and be rested. Or I can get up at 5 a.m. and be president. I believe that anyone can be successful in life, regardless of natural talent or the environment within which we live. This is not based on measuring success by human competitiveness for wealth, possessions, influence, and fame but adhering to God's standards of truth, justice, humility, service, compassion, forgiveness, and love. We've got to stop crying and start sweating, stop talking and start walking, stop cursing and start praying. The strength we need will not come from the White House, but from every house in America. Energy and the National Goals, A Crisis of Confidence, delivered July 15, 1979. A joyous occasion is never quite as wonderful as when it becomes a memory. We should live our lives as though Christ were coming this afternoon. Speech to Bible class at Plains, Georgia, March 1976, and Boston Sunday Herald Advertiser, April 11th, 1976. We are of course a nation of differences. Those differences don't make us weak. They're the source of our strength. Aggression unopposed becomes a contagious disease. We will not learn how to live together in peace by killing each other's children. America does not at the moment have a functioning democracy. A fundamentalist can't bring himself or herself to negotiate with people who disagree with them because the negotiating process itself is an indication of implied equality. We must adjust to changing times and still hold to unchanging principles. 
Unless both sides win, no agreement can be permanent. Always tell the truth, and take an interest in serving the people around you as much as possible. I think I was identified as a failed president because I wasn't re-elected. We have a tendency to condemn people who are different from us, to define their sins as paramount and our own sinfulness as being insignificant. To me, faith is not just a noun, but also a verb Jerry Falwell can go straight to hell, and I mean that in a Christian way. We cannot resort to simplistic or extreme solutions which substitute myths for common sense. It's not necessary to fear the prospect of failure, but to be determined not to fail. I think there ought to be a strict separation or wall built between our religious faith and our practice of political authority in office. I don't think the President of the United States should extol Christianity if he happens to be a Christian at the expense of Judaism, Islam, or other faiths. I have often wanted to drown my troubles, but I can't get my wife to go swimming. Life is just too short to go quail hunting with the wrong people. I have never been happier, more exhilarated, at peace, rested, inspired, and aware of the grandeur of the universe and the greatness of God than when I find myself in a natural setting not much changed from the way he made it. We don't have any problem finding enough things to do. The problem we have is making sure we don't overload ourselves inadvertently. One of the most serious problems that our country has inherited an unwillingness to talk to anyone who disagrees with us or who won't accept, before a discussion, all the premises that we demand. I would describe fundamentalism as, first of all, a movement led almost invariably by authoritarian males who consider themselves to be superior to others and who have an overwhelming commitment to subjugate women and to dominate their fellow believers. Jesus never said a word about homosexuality. In all of his teachings about multiple things, he never said that gay people should be condemned. I personally think it is very fine for gay people to be married in civil ceremonies. Like music and art, love of nature is a common language that can transcend political or social boundaries. It is difficult for the common good to prevail against the intense concentration of those who have a special interest, especially if the decisions are made behind locked doors. Everyone has a right to peaceful coexistence, the basic personal freedoms, the alleviation of suffering, and the opportunity to lead a productive life. We know that a peaceful world cannot long exist, one-third rich and two-thirds hungry. We can choose to alleviate suffering. We can choose to work together for peace. We can make these changes, and we must. America has no functioning democracy at this moment. Many of the most highly publicized events of my presidency are not nearly as memorable or significant in my life as fishing with my daddy. It's abominable, and it's a disgrace to a great democracy to see what's happened in our country. The main reason for that has been the enormous infusion of high quantities of money to campaigns, governors, Congress, President, and the U.S. Senate. In order for us human beings to commit ourselves personally to the inhumanity of war, we find it necessary first to dehumanize our opponents, which is in itself a violation of the beliefs of all religions. Once we characterize our adversaries as beyond the scope of God's mercy and grace, their lives lose all value. According to Gandhi, the seven sins are wealth without works, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, science without humanity, worship without sacrifice, and politics without principle. Well, Hubert Humphrey may have sinned in the eyes of God, as we all do, but according to those definitions of Gandhi's, it was Hubert Humphrey without sin. To work for better understanding among people, one does not have to be a former president sitting at a fancy conference room table. Peace can be made in the neighborhoods, the living rooms, the playing fields, and the classrooms of our country. You can do what you have to do, and sometimes you can do it even better than you think you can. The founding of our nation was more than a political event, it was an act of faith, a promise to Americans and to the entire world. The Declaration of Independence declared that people can govern themselves, that they can live in freedom with equal rights, that they can respect the rights of others. Too many of us now tend to worship self-indulgence and consumption. I think the Bible is completely inspired by God in its overall messages. But, for the people of those days to know what was going to happen 4,000 years later in a world of astronomy or subatomic particles, they didn't have access to the knowledge that we presently have about geology. 
So, we know now that the world was created many of billions of years ago, 13 or 14 billion years ago. As far as they knew, the Earth was the center of the universe. They thought that stars were little twinkling things in the sky whereas now we know stars are very distant and much larger than the Earth. Penalties against possession of a drug should not be more damaging to an individual than the use of the drug itself, and where they are, they should be changed. Nowhere is this more clear than in the laws against possession of marijuana in private for personal use. Therefore, I support legislation amending federal law to eliminate all federal criminal penalties for the possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. America has always been a country of innovation and dynamism, entrepreneurship. And I think that one of the things that has made our country great too is its heterogeneous population where people come here from all over the world. War may sometimes be a necessary evil, but no matter how necessary, it is always an evil, never a good. We will not learn how to live together in peace by killing each other's children. We simply must have faith in each other, faith in our ability to govern ourselves, and faith in the future of this nation. Restoring that faith and that confidence to America is now the most important task we face. Spirit is like the wind, and that we can't see it, but can see its effects, which are profound. When I was president, I announced and I still maintain that I can live with Roe v. Wade. I did everything I possibly could as president under that ruling, which I don't think ought to be changed, to minimize the need for abortions. I think every abortion is a result of a horrible series of errors on the part of people involved. You cannot divorce religious belief and public service. I've never detected any conflict between God's will and my political duty. If you violate one, you violate the other. For the first time in the history of our country, the majority of our people believe that the next five years will be worse than the past five years. Penalties against possession of a drug should not be more damaging to an individual than the use of the drug itself. The abuse of women and girls is the most pervasive and unaddressed human right violation on earth. Throughout my life, I've seen the difference that volunteering efforts can make in people's lives. I know the personal value of service as a local volunteer. If you fear making anyone mad, then you ultimately probe for the lowest common denominator of human achievement. The truth is that male religious leaders have had and still have an option to interpret holy teachings either to exalt or subjugate women. They have, for their own selfish ends, overwhelmingly chosen the latter. Our laws were not designed to accommodate three or four thousand refugees coming here per day. Our laws were designed for people to be screened in a foreign country, carefully cataloged, and brought here a few at a time. This just didn't happen. When I reflect upon my blessings during my very nice lifetime, I am inspired to make sure that I spend the balance of the days of my existence in a productive way. I believe there is complete equality between men and women. And I believe those passages in the New Testament, not by Jesus, but by Paul, that say women should not adorn themselves, they should always wear hats or color their hair in church, things like that, I think they are signs of the times and should not apply to modern day life. Because they're usually free to love and guide and befriend the young without having to take daily responsibility for them, they can often reach out past pride and fear of failure and close the space between generations. Each of us must rededicate ourselves to serving the common good. We are a community. Our individual fates are linked, our futures intertwined, and if we act in that knowledge and in that spirit together, as the Bible says, we can move mountains. This view that women are somehow inferior to men is not restricted to one religion or belief. It is widespread. Women are prevented from playing a full and equal role in many faiths. When I was in the White House, I was confronted with the challenge of the Cold War. Both the Soviet Union and I had 30,000 nuclear weapons that could destroy the entire Earth and I had to maintain the peace. We live in a time of transition, an uneasy era which is likely to endure for the rest of this century. During this period, we may be tempted to abandon some of the time-honored principles and commitments which have been proven during the difficult times of past generations. We must never yield to this temptation. Our American values are not luxuries, but necessities, not the salt in our bread, but the bread itself. In a nation that was proud of hard work, strong families, close-knit communities, and our faith in God, 
Too many of us now tend to worship self-indulgence and consumption. Human identity is no longer defined by what one does, but by what one owns. But we've discovered that owning things and consuming things does not satisfy our longing for meaning. We've learned that piling up material goods cannot fill the emptiness of lives which have no confidence or purpose. I don't believe that China, in my lifetime or maybe my children's lifetime, be equal to the United States militarily speaking, but they are very careful to avoid any engagement in war. They are basically a peaceful country, which gives them another advantage over the United States when we are much more inclined to go to war for various reasons. Last year, I was on Pat Robertson's show, and we discussed our basic Christian faith, for instance, separation of church and state. It's contrary to my beliefs to try to exalt Christianity as having some sort of preferential status in the United States. That violates the Constitution. I'm not in favor of mandatory prayer in school or of using public funds to finance religious education. I've looked on many women with lust. I've committed adultery in my heart many times. God knows I will do this and forgives me. The stronger the ties that bind us to God, the more likely we are to live, react, and behave in harmony with greater joy, peace, and happiness. We have seven and a half times as many people in prison. And we have eight times as many black women in prison now as we did in 1981 when I left the White House. So that's been one of the major concerns I've had as a non-lawyer to criticize the American justice system, which is highly biased against black people and poor people. And it still is. Every advance in this half century social security, civil rights, Medicare, aid to education, one after another came with the support and leadership of American labor. The existing and long-standing use of the word evolution in our state's textbooks has not adversely affected Georgians' belief in the omnipotence of God as creator of the universe. There can be no incompatibility between Christian faith and proven facts concerning geology, biology, and astronomy. There is no need to teach that stars can fall out of the sky and land on a flat earth in order to defend our religious faith. Carter slams George's evolution proposal. The CNN interview, January 30th, 2004. I want to make it clear, if there is ever a conflict, I will go for beauty, clean air, water, and landscape. I think as far as the adverse impact on the nation around the world, this administration has been the worst in history. The overt reversal of America's basic values as expressed by previous administrations, including those of George H.W. Bush and Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon and others, has been the most disturbing to me. I hate to see complacency prevail in our lives when it's so directly contrary to the teaching of Christ. Everyone who has run knows that its most important value is in removing tension and allowing a release from whatever other cares the day may bring. I think with the advent of Reagan, and subsequently, both parties, there's been a strong move towards the advantage given to the richer people in taxation and grants and supplements and things of that kind. Primarily exacerbated more recently by the Supreme Court's stupid ruling on Citizens United, and now there's a massive flood of money into the political system that I think has subverted the essence of a moral and ethical standard that used to permeate American democracy. Now it's not an admirable process. I think we've gone backwards. There's always an element of self-delusion among people who believe they ought to be president. There's an underestimation of your opponent and an overestimation of your own abilities. This is compatible with being rich and powerful, the idea that we were blessed by God because we deserve to be blessed. A country will have authority and influence because of moral factors, not its military strength. Because it can be humble and not blatant and arrogant because our people want to serve others and not dominate others. And a nation without morality will soon lose its influence around the world. I say to you quite frankly that the time for racial discrimination is over. Billy Graham is one of my great lifetime heroes. I think he epitomizes the essence of what a Christian leader should be. I have participated in some of his crusades a couple of times in Atlanta. 
I've seen the profound impact he's had on me personally and on other people who were not Christians and accepted the election of Barack Obama was a very wonderful step forward for America, which has unfortunately been tainted by the ugly reaction of some right-wing activists who are doing their best to cast aspersions on his character and to question his religion and citizenship. Every act of energy conservation is more than just common sense, I tell you it is an act of patriotism. I am convinced that UFOs exist because I've seen one. I'm not in favor of the government mandating a prayer in school because our country was founded on the fact that no particular religious faith would have ascendance over or preferential treatment over any other. Because we are now running out of gas and oil, we must prepare quickly for a third change to strict conservation and to the use of permanent renewable energy sources like solar power. I believe that the boycott that we have against Cuba is counterproductive, and it also makes the 12 million or so Cuban people suffer unnecessarily just because of a foolish policy of the United States. I just look at death as not a threat. It's inevitable, and I have an assurance of eternal life. Two centuries ago our nation's birth was a milestone in the long quest for freedom, but the bold and brilliant dream which excited the founders of our nation still awaits its consummation. I have no new dream to set forth today, but rather urge a fresh faith in the old dream. There's no doubt that the Christian right has gone to bed with the more conservative elements of the Republican Party. And there's been a melding in their goals when it comes to the separation of church and state. I've always believed in the separation of church and state. Sunday interview, a statesman and a man of faith with a lifetime of public service to his credit, the former president reflects on the beliefs that have sustained him. Interview with Don Latin, January 12, 1997. And so I say to you and to others around the world, whether they wish us well or ill, do not underestimate us Americans. We lack neither strength nor wisdom. When we go to the Bible, we should keep in mind that the basic principles of the Bible are taught by God, but written down by human beings deprived of modern day knowledge. So there is some fallibility in the writings of the Bible. But the basic principles are applicable to my life and I don't find any conflict among them. I believe there is complete equality between men and women. Human identity is no longer defined by what one does, but rather by what one owns. In the Bible homosexuality is condemned, but along with divorce and greed and callousness toward poor people. So its elevation to a highest priority among some religious groups has been very disturbing to me. One of the greatest concerns that I had when I became president was the vast array of nuclear weapons in the arsenals of the United States and the Soviet Union and a few other countries, and also the great proliferation of conventional weapons, non-nuclear weapons, particularly as a tremendous burden on the economies of developing or very poor countries. I think the most challenging thing for me in my life and in the Bible is that we worship Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And America is constantly at war. Whether the borders that divide us are picket fences or national boundaries, we are all neighbors in a global community.